Well, good evening, everyone. We're here at the Creation Museum, and I always talk for a couple of minutes about nothing. As the notifications go out, the people uh, to get on here hasn't even showed up on my uh, phone yet, uh, but okay, uh, in accord with regulations. Okay, so we're here at Answers in Genesis, we're here at the Creation Museum, and this is one of those, well, it's one of those times I've been saying the last couple of days uh, that the atheists are right. They've been saying nobody comes to the Creation Museum and nobody comes to the Ark. I have to admit, nobody came today. Nobody. No, they didn't. The atheists are finally right, Ben. They're finally right. Uh, nobody's coming because it was closed. That's why nobody's coming. So I hope we can uh, get this opened as soon as we can. We need to be praying that God works in mysterious and wonderful ways and ways we've never seen or even envisaged to get us to be able to open mm. to the public the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter because my heart's burdened every day for the fact that we, we can be witnessing to people here every day, and we have been, non-Christians, quitting Christians, influencing generations, and now, um, well, God's in control. Hard to understand sometimes, but God's uh, in control. Okay, you are in for an adventure. I have with me Ben, who is our VP in charge of AV here at Answers in Genesis, the Creation Museum, and the Ark Encounter. And Ben's team has done an astronomical job. See, you like that? I see what you did there. Yeah, astronomical job in refurbishing. Actually, you rebuilt. Actually, it's almost like you destroyed it and started from That's the ground exactly up. exactly what we did. If you've been to the planetarium before at the Creation Museum, this is gonna blow your mind. You will not recognize it. I didn't even, I walked in there tonight I didn't recognize it. Doesn't it. Feel like space, it, no, does it, it doesn't feel like the same space, does it? No, it does not feel like the same space. Okay, so we're now getting a lot of people that are, that are going on here, people watching from all over. So we'll move her here. Now, it's not finished yet. No, not quite. Uh, not quite, but it's almost. Mm -hmm. And so it'll be well and truly ready by <laughs> right. the time we're the time we open. Uh, able to open. So you can see they're starting to get rid of all the construction equipment here. And we have a new sign up here, the Stargazer planetarium uh, so you can see that and so we're going to enter enter into a whole different universe you like that i do i see um, what you did there right? too astronomical <laughs> you know right uh, you know my son-in-law bodhi when we do answers news he always likes to use puns and things right and i'm trying to outdo him tonight <laughs> okay so uh we're going to go in here and this is uh Ah, here we go. All right, get ready. Get ready for this experience. Here we go as we come in. So new carpet. Yeah, all new carpet. And in fact, we extended the room so it's even bigger. Mm -hmm. As you come in here, now these panels on the side here, as you, as you get inside and when the lighting's exactly right and so on, you'll feel like you're sitting inside a spacecraft looking out onto the moon surface. That was the idea. That is, that is moon blowing. <laughs> it is. So as we come around here, this is some of the equipment uh, that we see set up here. By the way, if you want to ask Ben some questions while he's here, I mean, he is uh, the he is the expert on all this. Uh, he's the head of this and put it all together. And I see one of our animators, programmers. Mike's a little bit of everything. He, he does everything, doesn't <laughs> he? he? Is. Yeah. He pretty much uh, designed this so space. He's sort of hiding over there. Uh, but this is where the operators will sit back right. here. Now let's go into here and we'll get Ben to do, uh, not Ben, uh, Mike to do a little bit of magic in here. Now, this is not all set up yet. They're just experimenting with it. Right. We can only do a few things tonight. So here are all the new seats. If you've been here before, it just doesn't look the same. You got all these uh, seats here, beautiful seats. And they came from where? The Netherlands. The yep. Netherlands, mm -hmm. okay. Fortunately, they got here they, before. <laughs> they finally arrived. It took a little while, but they arrived before it took, we had. It took millions of years. <laughs> and and we, we have a planetarium that doesn't believe in millions of years. 
So, and you see these containers stacked out the front here and on the other side. Uh, well, that's to make you feel like you're in the spacecraft, right? And these are the storage containers. See on the side uh, where it says, you know, Stargazer, we had a special uh, special sort of... Uh, yeah, Mike designed that there. just for in here. And uh, we made it look like, you know, these are uh, sort of old used containers. See that? And you see another version of it uh, on there. And they also have a purpose so that people can't... Yeah, by code we had to put a railing here so people couldn't hit their head. Yeah. So Mike and I put our heads together and decided that if we just put shipping containers here, they're all locked down, um, that would serve as our railing. And it's sort of like a prop too. Right. That is fantastic. And these seats, okay, so let me try one of these seats. So these are, okay, this is the first time in the entire world, in the history of the universe, that somebody has sat in this seat. That's true. That's true. Okay. So, uh, I'll sit down here, and then you lie back. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's very nice. You can sleep in here. Oh, i got to wake up and do a program. Okay. So. There's also a little desk in each of these seats. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so that we can do live programs in here. Oh. And that was why we opened okay. up the back here, so that we could do live presentations. Do they have coffee holders? <laughs> they do, actually. We yeah. had those custom made. So we're letting right people... Here. Oh, they do. Uh -huh. They have coffee holders there, uh, because we want people to come in here and enjoy themselves. Yeah, and relax and, uh, and enjoy the show. It's all new carpet. Now, mm -hmm. Ben, explain the dome. It's, this yeah. is different to what we had before. Uh, it's very different. One of the things we wanted to do was uh, provide a better viewing experience for every seat. And the best way to do that was to tilt the, tilt the dome forward. So it gives everyone a better, a better view of the show. Um, and you get to see more of the dome from the seated position. So, and then we added the, this cove lighting so that we can do a lot of fun up lighting and entrance so, lighting. And so all before, that good stuff. We, before we get Mike down the back there to show us a few things on the on the dome here. Get ready, we're going to show you some things on the dome. And we want to look at those projectors too. Somebody asked a question. As we go along, I'll just ask you some of the questions. Somebody asked, are the seats leather? No. Uh, no, no. To be politically correct, no animals were harmed in <laughs> right, the construction exactly. of this planetarium. Is <laughs> exactly. That, is that right? Yeah, no, they're not leather. Yeah. Okay. No. But they're very nice. Yeah, they are. They're actually a wool blend with a scotch guard on, front, on the top. Oh, top okay. And, uh, all right, so we're going to do some things with the dome. Now, this is a laser projection system. I'm going to show you these laser projectors here in a minute. Well, actually, while we've got the lights up, let's go over here and look okay. at this one. This is one of two. We have two. One here, right. and there's one on the other side. The camera might be able to pick that up up there. I want you to see the size of this thing. Okay, so um, as our videographer comes back over here, I'll, I'll, put, my, I'll put my camera up against against it here. What sort of lens is that? It's a fisheye lens and so the two projectors, this one shoots the back half of the dome and that one in the back obviously shoots the front half of the dome. These projectors are made by digital projection. They're about 800 percent brighter than our former projectors. 800 yeah. percent brighter than our for yep. former projectors. And these are laser projectors. And they don't have lamps in them or bulbs. And look at the size of these things. I mean, you know, if I get back <laughs> here, I mean, look at that. Thing. They're huge. They are. They've got what? I think six fans on them. Yeah, they put out a good bit of heat. So we've got two of those laser projectors. Mm -hmm. A new sound system? Full, full, uh, yeah, fully refurbished sound system. And then we also put in a lot of lighting just to give it an aesthetic. Um, we want it to be a theme space. So we've got a lot of LED lights above the dome. So I'll have a videographer go to the back. And then maybe Mike can uh, set it sort of like. You know, I know we're still experimenting. We haven't programmed it all yet. But uh, set it sort of like um, people will see when they come in. So when they come in, the dome will be lit, but you can see be through the dome. Right. So we wanted people to be able to see the catwalk up there. That's actually a functional catwalk. But we wanted to add it into the aesthetic. So we have lights shining through the grating so, in the so catwalk. It looks like a catwalk in a space station. Exactly. We wanted the spacecraft. whole thing to look like a spacecraft. Oh, wow. And then we added these LED strip lights underneath yep. the catwalk. And um, then we can, you can change the lighting on there. Uh -huh. Full spectrum, we and, can do any color. And, and uh, oh, look at that. Yeah. Wow, that is incredible. We got people from Australia watching. How about that? Someone said, I've been in the older one, now I need to go back. They definitely do. Yeah, this is the younger one. Right. <laughs> Actually, it's totally different, isn't it? 
So uh, you can do all sorts of colors up there. Yeah, yeah, we can do a lot and of And so as people come in, it'll, it'll yeah. do sort of interesting things. It adds things. a mood and yeah, effect to the whole thing. Exactly. And it's a tilted dome. Mm -hmm. So we've actually got more seats in than we had previously. We do. We have 82 seats in here now. So 82 seats. So we added four or five seats. Yes, and you can see the panels on the side here. There's when the you know the lighting will be just done right. Right. So as you're sitting here, you feel like I'm in a spaceship and we're looking out on the moon. Yep. We wanted we to give that lunar surface on and either uh, side. Yeah, and that, a lot of that is uh, Mike actually did that. So uh, hey, Mike, how about um, we show them a few things now? I just want to say to people, look, we're using a, an iPhone as a, as a video camera and we're going through Facebook. So please understand that you're not going to see what it's like sitting here. I mean, it's a million percent better sitting here, uh, right here, as you can see in the planetarium. But let's um, try to see a few things if we can. We'll sort of try to get a, a bit of it. So how about... Um, how about we start on Earth? Can we start on Earth and fly out to a planet like, how about Mars? Let's start on Earth and take, take, so take the lights down so when the program starts, people won't see the lights behind or anything, will they? Okay, so let's see how we go here. Okay, so the lights are going down. There we are. And it dims. And okay, now we're going to go to the evening sky. Uh, okay. So evening sky, yes. Let's go to Earth. Can we, can we find Earth? Okay. So we're on Earth, and we're going to leave Earth. And as we leave Earth. By the way, an eight-year-old, and his name is somewhere here, um, Ethan, asked how long oh, did the renovation take? And somebody else, there was another eight-year-old, another young person, asked how far the seats go back. I don't remember the degree of angle that these go back. Um, I don't remember the actual degree. Mike, do you remember how far the seats lean back, the degree? I, I can't remember. Okay. That's, see, you got him stumped. Hey, there you are, Byron. You me. got him stumped. Okay, so we're leaving Earth now. And it is so much brighter here than what you even see on, on uh, yeah, somebody said the Earth looks really flat. Yeah, that globe spinning around in space. Yeah, it looks really flat. Yeah, that's right. Of course, I know they're tongue in cheek. Um, so, so excited, praying we'll get to come soon, that this lockdown will stop, stay healthy. Thank you from Ohio. How big is the dome? 13 year old. What, what was the meter size of the dome? The, the size of the dome, the meter size? Mike? 30, 30 meters? Yeah. So what is it? I think it's a 30 meter dome, but I can't, I can't remember for sure. It's been a while since we looked at all those specs. They've been so busy putting everything up, <laughs> yeah. they forget all the specs. Okay, so we're in Mars? Yes. So we're in Mars. So there's Mars. Look at that. Okay, is that the Milky Way I can see in the background there? Yeah, it is. Uh, you could pro you can even see it on the iPhone because I can see it on mine. Okay, so now let's. What's another planet we could fly to? Jupiter. Let's go to Jupiter. Let's go to Jupiter. Okay, we're going to fly to Jupiter. All right. Okay, it'll it'll go a bit dark up here as we leave Mars. And see the Milky Way though there. Wow, look at that. This is so cool, a seven-year-old from New York said. <laughs> Someone said, keep sharing these awesome videos. We're trying, to, we're trying to do something while you're locked in your houses with not much to do. Okay, here we are. We've arrived at Jupiter. Someone said, it's my favorite part of the museum, and it will be even better. Okay, so we've arrived at Jupiter. Uh, was that Jupiter? Okay. How about Saturn? Can we go to Saturn? Of course. Oh, of course. We can go anywhere. You, where do you want to go? We can go anywhere. <laughs> you name it. <laughs> we can't go to heaven yet. No. no. <laughs> Sometime in the future. Uh, this is so cool. I can see the Milky Way on my Samsung. <laughs> okay, I can see it on my iPhone too. Okay, let's have a competition. 
Samsung or iPhone. <laughs> okay. um, oh, look at the Milky Way there. We're on our way. Uh oh, here it comes. Look at that. Look at those rings. Uh, so we're seeing Saturn now. Yes. So what happened to the rings? They disappear. Oh, it's it's yeah, it's, it's right on it's, edge perfectly. It's right on the edge perfectly. Okay. And then as we come around, we watch those rings come back into view. There they are. Uh, they're the rings coming back into view right now. Look at that. So, Graydon Age 11 asks, could you show us a star up close, please? Can we show them a star up close instead of one of the planets? What's, do you have a star you can go to? Of course, our sun. Of course, our sun. How about that? That's a star. All right. Uh, so let's go to a star. The star that keeps the Earth nice and warm. Thanks for asking. See? You have not because you asked not. And you asked and we're going to do it for you. She's back there at the computer. She's trying to find the sun. There it comes. I think we found it. There it is. Oh, look, it's even got... It's even got... Uh, you know, I've got to be careful because Dr. Danny Faulkner, who's our astronomer and he runs this place, I always get it wrong when I say sunspot spots or what are the other, the other things on the sun? <laughs> I'm not an astronomer. I've got to be careful. He'll get upset with me for giving you wrong uh, information. But there we are. So you're looking at our sun. And someone said we're studying the universe this year in school. Can you go to Pluto? Okay, somebody asked, can we go to Pluto? Of course. Well, of course. Mike says, of course, we can go to Pluto. Okay, we, we're going to see if we can find Pluto. Um, Faith Age 8 wants to know uh, what planet has the big volcano other than Earth. Hmm. I don't know about that. Dr. Faulkner, should we? Yeah. We should have had Dr. Faulkner had here tonight. Here. Okay, I didn't mean to actually do this. Uh, somebody asks, actually, that's EZ's Wayne. That's my, my friend EZ, son-in-law of Ray Comfort, you know, from Living Waters. He said, take us to Australia. We're not allowed right now uh, because you've got to be quarantined for 14 days if you go to Australia. So we can't do that. Sorry, EZ, you should have read the news. It's quarantined. Can't do it. Okay. Here um, we go. Oh, here we go. Is that Pluto? Yes, it is. That is Pluto. I don't think I've seen Pluto up close like that. They're asking, is there a new show? Actually, the Creative Cosmos show, which is our premier show, is being upgraded. We'll show you it, uh, a little bit of it now. It hasn't been upgraded yet. They're still working on that. And we're coming up with a brand new show next year. That's the idea, uh, yeah. But the upgrading of all our shows is, is going to be fantastic as it is. We have a show on aliens and so on. Can we go outside of this galaxy? Benjamin 8 asks. Do they have anything outside the galaxy? How about another galaxy in outer space? We're going to see. We're, he's typing on the keyboard, saying, Computer, help me, help me, search, help me. Well, what about the Big Dipper? Can we find the Big Dipper? Somebody asked that. Okay. Aiden, eight years old, asked about the Big Dipper. Big Dipper. Is Pluto even a planet? Somebody said. Okay, we're not getting into that debate tonight. <laughs> okay. Um, it's, it's a planet and it's not. <laughs> there you are. So, Jonathan, age 11, would like to see Mars. So, okay, so what are you looking for, Mike? What, where are we going? I just found a random thing called Alex Saucer Ball. It might be a, it might be a space. Oh, here we are. I wonder if that's an asteroid. There's a thing out there in the universe. We found it. <laughs> we found a thing in the universe. Okay, let's do Mars, and then let's have a look at uh, a little bit of our own program. Bert, age 40... Oh, Bert. <laughs> he put age 45 with a smiley <laughs> face because all these kids are putting on their, you know, what their age is. So Bert, at age 45, asks, can we see the space station? Well, actually, at age 45, you might not be able to see the space station. <laughs> okay, now I'm in trouble. I know, because as you get older, your eyes don't uh, go as good as they used to. So, yeah, we're going to show you a little bit of the space station, because we're going to do that at the beginning of our program uh, that we have, the Creative Cosmos, so you'll see that in a moment. Will we find Martians That's on Mars? Smart. Okay, let's look for the Martians. If anyone can see a Martian, please let me know. Um, 
maybe we should be looking for Corona Martians <laughs> out there. So there is Mars. Look at that close up of Mars. So somebody asked, can it show the pattern of Mars and the Earth during the days of Joshua? No, we haven't figured out how to do all that stuff yet. Uh, we, we're going to have to figure it out. Okay, so what we're going to do is switch gears here. So Mike, yeah. can you bring up the Creator Cosmos, which is our premier program? Now, this hasn't been converted for this system, so it's going to be a million percent better on the new si when, it's, when it's converted for this system, but, but it still looks good. Um, let me see. All right, we're going to hear the sound as well. As we are learning more about the universe, we are continually amazed at the astonishing diversity and beauty we find. Though marred by the curse, the universe still exhibits the handiwork of the Lord. By learning more about the intricacies of the celestial realm, we gain an infinitesimal glimpse into the infinite mind of God. One extraordinary aspect of creation is the incredible range of sizes and distances we observe. The International Space Station orbits approximately 200 miles above the surface of the Earth. Wow, that was incredible. The sound, that's like five million percent better. How, how much better is the sound? Right? A lot. It's a lot better. It's, it's, that, that, <clears throat> it'll blow you out of your seats. It will. If you want it's it to. It's loud. Okay, so uh, Mike, somebody asked if they could see the moon. We'll do a couple more before we end here. Okay. Can we see the moon? Of course. Okay. What about the Hubble telescope? Do they have that? I'll give it a go. You give it a go? Okay, we'll type in Hubble telescope and see if it will do that. Okay, we're going to try and see the moon. Uh, so just wait there for the moon. Somebody said we saw Florida. Yeah, for anyone that's seen the created cosmos before, this is even going to be so much, so much better. I mean, uh, totally upgraded sound, the viewing quality. Literally it, everything it, upgraded. Everything upgraded. You, it'll feel like a brand new program. You won't even recognize it. Okay, so we're leaving Earth again. We're leaving Earth. And we're traveling to, who was the narrator of the Creative Cosmos? Someone was asking. Paul Herlinger, I think was his name. He was the, uh, the old wit from Adventures in Odyssey. Oh, okay. So people will probably recognize the, the voice. Yeah. Okay, so we left Earth. Okay, and we're looking for the moon. I think I see the moon. There we are. Faith, she is age eight, would like to know how the space station hangs there. Well, it's out in space and it's moving at high speed to overcome a gravity pull around the Earth. And there's our moon. There it is. Actually, they have to keep um, giving you a little thrust now and then Do to they? keep it up. The there, space station? Right? I think so. I think you're right. Danny would yeah. know all those questions. He would know all those questions. <laughs> Why didn't we have Dr. Danny Faulkner here tonight? Ben, you and I are amateurs. <laughs> We're terrible this at this. We are. So my granddaughter recognized the voice of the narrator. Uh -huh. How about that? Um, so, to the Hubble. oh, somebody asked about the Hubble telescope. We'll make this our, our last one before we show you a couple of other neat things in here. So we're going to go to the Hubble telescope, apparently. Okay, we're leaving the moon and the Earth. Look at that, disappearing into the background there. And, oh, look at all these stars out there. Uh, that's not the Hubble. There's somebody. That's not the <laughs> Hubble telescope. That is not the Hubble telescope. Someone said, I'm 11, Evelyn, and I'm nine years old, and I really love your videos. That oh. is so great. By the way, tomorrow, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, we have our science experiment uh, for kids from our lab. And it's done live from the Creation Museum. And that, that, we're doing all this uh, every day. We're doing a number of things because a lot of people, they can't go out to restaurants right. right now. They can't 
a lot of them are keeping away from shopping centers and other things mm -hmm. and uh, you know tourist attractions are all closed and so on so um, but anyway so 10 o'clock science experiments 12 o'clock uh, one of our speakers from Legacy Hall and the Creation Museum 3 o'clock I do an animal encounter with our, our zoo staff and tomorrow I think we're doing tarantulas and oh that'll be fun something called uh, uh, a vinegar something or other. I don't know what it was. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we're doing, uh, and, and scorpions, that's tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, we're going to give people a walk through the new Sanctity of Life exhibit. Oh, all very all cool. the preparations that are being done for that, that's going to blow their mind too. I see Australia. There we are. Easy, one to go to Australia. Easy, from Living Waters. There you are. We did it for you. There's Australia. Right there, it's on Earth. Okay, so we'll turn the lights back on here again, give you a bit more of a look uh, here. And uh, uh, there we are. And we'll, we'll come down the, the front here. Oh, there's the earth up there and the stars. We've got the lights on. And so, okay, very quickly, uh, I wanted to just remind you of our Facebook Live programs. I just went through them uh, that we're doing every day while the museum and the ark are closed and provided people still keep wanting to watch them okay and any resources you order online through answersandgenesis.org store uh, and you use the promo code Matthew 6 Matthew, go and read Matthew 6 by the way uh, Matthew 6 uh, that promo code will get you 20% off whatever you order and uh, just to go through a few things real quickly um, Dr. Denny Faulkner the creator cosmos what the Bible reveals about astronomy. That's his major book on that. This is a study. Um, this is great uh, for kids, for adults, for anyone. The Stargazer's Guide to the Night Sky. And uh, it has an actual teacher guide uh, to go with it too. If I can get it to stand back up again. Oh, look, they're all falling down. Uh, that's fine. And it has a teacher's guide uh, to go with it, introductory to astronomy. And then... I can't believe the number of people these days that believe in a flat earth, but that's Dr. Danny Faulkner's definitive work on the flat earth from an astronomical and biblical perspective to show that the earth is not flat. In fact, you saw it up there. In fact, it's up there now, and it's spinning around, and it's round. And then Dr. Danny Faulkner's book on astronomy, illustrated book, beautiful illustrations in there. That's great for kids and adults. And three videos real quickly. The Creator Cosmos, that's the actual program. Uh, the premier program we use in the planetarium and we have another program called aliens fact or fiction and then uh, this one here design in astronomy uh, so you can go on our web store and see all the different uh, astronomical uh, resources that we have someone asked will dr Faulkner be speaking during any of these live events yes we'll make sure we do a uh, live event with dr uh, denny faulkner at some stage in fact we might get him to come in the planetarium here for one of these mm and actually do a teaching session. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be fascinating. Then mm -hmm. I can learn right. Right, about some of these things. Keep doing one with um, Roger, I think, next week. So next week, for one of the, one of the 10 o'clock programs for the kids, he's going to do a program then. And that'll be for all the homeschoolers and Christian school kids and kids out of public school. Right. For everybody. For actually, everyone. adults will enjoy it uh, too. So, hey, just wanted to also say, uh, please pray for this ministry. We need to pray for each other in this time and all that's happening and I mean it's hard to understand what's happening really and what's going on and why things are the way they are I mean it's a little perplexing uh, to figure it all out um, God is in control I know that uh, even though it, from our human perspective it's hard to believe that that uh, that he's in control we, we look at things and we only see it from a limited human perspective so please pray for each other pray for this ministry it's really difficult for us, I have to tell you, uh, because we have a large staff and the income from tickets every day at the Creation Museum and the Ark are an integral part of our financing. Uh, and without that, um, uh, there's a lot of sacrifice being made uh, by people here at the ministry and will have to be made uh, and as we go on here too. So we just really need your prayers. And you can go to answersandgenesis.org on the front page of our website you'll see a personal letter from me and it's our response to the coronavirus and uh, also if anyone can help us uh, financially there's a special donate button uh, for you to click because um, we would really appreciate it um, if, 
if uh, people do that and pray for uh, this nation to, to get back to the freedoms that we enjoy uh, and being able to get out and about. Actually, you know what, you need to pray for this nation because, you know, as I see what's happening, I, I also recognize that the evil that's in this nation and in fact all around the world is a stench to our Creator God. Uh, abortion, do you realize do you realize there's more people, children, being killed, murdered by abortion every day in America that are dying from the coronavirus probably all around the world? I mean, it, you think of that and uh, think of uh, the fact that, well, you got that, uh, you've got uh, sexual perversion that permeates our culture, uh, it is uh, it's just sad to see uh, what's going on. And God's not going to stand idly back. He's going to deal with this nation. 61 million children killed by abortion since Roe versus Wade. Nobody is talking about that in the news right now, are they? Nobody is talking at all. Hey, by the way, there we see, is that the space station? Uh, that's Oh, there's a Hubble. Okay, I'll turn around, have a look at it. Somebody wanted the Hubble telescope. There's a Hubble telescope and a rotating spherical Earth. There you are. Um, but anyway, pray for this nation. This nation needs to confess its sins before the Lord. That's what needs to happen. But that's true of Australia and Canada and United Kingdom and Europe and so it goes on. And, and with that... Someone asked, is it Eastern Standard Time? Or Eastern Standard Time for all the Facebook Lives. 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. With that, we're going to say good night and... Let's pray for each other.